in the last uh, video we have seen uh, how to uh, import the excel data interactively this is the continuation of the last uh, video uh, in the last video we uh, imported this data and uh, then try to visualize that data with very simple plot uh, in this video we will uh, again try to import different format of this excel data and uh, visualize that data and do some uh, modification also so let's start so first uh, let's see what this data looks like if we open this excel in excel in the data looks like swing okay so so this is a global temperature anomaly data means uh, this and this is given in 0 0.01 degree celsius so it means uh, that this 28 means 0.28 variation from the average uh, temperature of the uh, globally so if the average temperature say 14 is 14 degrees Celsius then uh, in 1880 January the the temperature was 14.28 and uh, in February it was 14.09 and similarly in uh, March it was uh, uh, 13. Point, uh, is 14 minus 0.11 so it will be 13.89 so similarly for all the uh, this is our data it is good to make the data uh, write the data in this format because it's easy to visualize but uh, we will try to uh, convert this data to the actual temperature and then we will visualize the data so first uh, we need to just import this data this data you can get from this uh, this nasa website and they keep updating this data uh, uh, every year and every month so this data the last time i have taken this data in uh, what what is this month uh, in august so this data is for august 2015 only uh, right now it's december so they have already uh, updated the data for uh, they must have updated the data for september october and november uh, so you can if you want to uh, read the most updated data then it's fine you can go to this website and download the data but uh, it's same even if you have less data you just need to know how to up uh, uh, how to import the data and analyze it so if even if the data is little more or little less it doesn't matter okay so we will try to see how that works so again we will do the same thing so we will go to this import data uh, icon we will click here and then the new window should emerge so let's wait okay so this one and we uh, we go for the excel file we need to find the excel file so let's go to the data analysis folder this is the excel file we need we need to import so just open it okay so and the uh, matlab automatically can read which are the numeric data this 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 by default can read the numeric data so uh, it knows the data starts from uh, uh, column A4 and uh, yeah, it, it read all the data and uh, so we can this is the uh, this is the actual data right the uh, these are all other things this line these are all uh, just uh, the information which uh, is which is not to be analyzed but it can it is only to be used for uh, getting the meaning meaningful result of our data so we will use that uh, that information but first we need to import this data so let's import this data in column vector and uh, the range has, is already is already 
been given means it's it's been taken by default and it's uh, by default it will replace the unimportable cells with nan values like uh, these are unimportable cells so it's uh, it is replaced by nan values this is also replaced by nan value right okay fine so uh, let's import this data and uh, okay first uh, let me clear this uh, everything let's clear it will clear all the uh, uh, all the variables saved in the workspace it will clear everything so it cleared then we uh, uh, do the CLC this will clear the screen and nothing will be there on the command window also okay fine so now we are ready to import the data so let's uh, import this data okay so let's import it okay this is our data and let's also generate the script for it which we can uh, manipulate later okay so this this is our data this is uh, uh, up for April August uh, this name has been given by default so if uh, earlier it was given April and now it's given April 1 that's because we uh, uh, MATLAB thinks that uh, uh, April named variable already exists so it gives uh, another name for that same data so this is mainly because uh, uh, we have already in imported the data and again imported the data like if I import again it will be with April 2 okay it's uh, just saying that it's importing so okay that doesn't matter let's uh, close it and import it again okay just go import data go to this folder and then select this excel file open okay fine and just uh, everything is fine what we have already seen just uh, and let's clear everything okay uh, let's clear everything uh, do it again okay so let's uh, close it clear this uh, variables okay go to import data select uh, the excel file from the uh, folder okay open and then this import okay now it's fine right Okay, uh, this only the year has two variables, right? First, uh, this uh, first year means this um, column data, and the second year means this column data. Okay, so we got all the data. Now we want to uh, let's have a quick plot for this data. So let's select all the data. Uh, okay, let's first make a quick XY plot for January only. So let's go to plot this uh, is xy plot so just click it here and it, it, it is generating the xy plot for january so we can see that uh, the global temperature in january is increasing right we can clearly see it from the data and this is the uh, variation in year means it started on 1880 and it ends in 2015 and uh, this is the very fluctuation of the temperature so earlier it used to be a very high fluctuation but uh, now it's not fluctuate, fluctuating that much but uh, we can see the trend of the data it's increasing okay uh, let's for the time being uh, do not care about the trend let's just see how we can visualize the data but later we will analyze uh, how can we find the trend and how can we analyze the data in more detail so uh, let's plot uh, more than one data together like january uh, july and uh, say okay only two so it's like a uh, uh, variation between the early month and the middle month so it's like plot jan and july so it's it's looking in if you plot like this then it will plot 
the January in X axis and July in Y axis. So this plot looks like so messy. So uh, okay, if we plot like plot in this way, multiple plots on the same graph. Uh, if you see what does this say? It's uh, for multiple plots on the same. Okay. So it has plotted uh, January uh, with this blue line and uh, uh, July with this uh, brown line. So we can even put uh, the legend, insert the legend so we can understand uh, which color means what data. So this color means July, this uh, blue color means January. So this is the fluctuations for all the data. We can similarly, we can plot from all the kinds of uh, variables. Okay. We can plot uh, year versus uh, January also. Let's put uh, year on the uh, y axis, uh, on the x axis, and uh, January on the y axis, and let's plot it. So, uh, okay, do it in the classical way, uh, in the conventional way. So, let's go to this plot uh, uh, icon and click it. Uh, you can see this is for 2D line graph using linear axis. and uh, this one is plot as multiple ser series, but in this uh, case, we want to plot uh, uh, x versus y, right? So it, let's go for this plot. Okay, so this this is the year, and this is uh, the fluctuations in month. So we can see that in uh, 1990, the fluctuations is this value. So we can uh, use the data cursor and know the exact. Uh, data value for the given year so for uh, x uh, is equal to 1916 in 1916 the uh, temperature fluctuation was 3 uh, in january and if we, you see here so in 2002 the fluctuation was 77 the anom anomaly was 77 not the fluctuation so uh it's uh, the anomaly is increasing right uh, so even we can plot the absolute scale so we just need to add uh, the uh, average value for all the years the global uh, average temperature which is 14 degrees Celsius, which we have already seen in the data also so if we add the uh, 14 degrees celsius to uh, to our uh, the anomaly then it will be in the absolute scale but and that doesn't matter it's still the uh, the data trend will still be the same okay so this is how we plot these uh, these data okay so uh, if if we just want to compare uh, the variation in different months so let's plot january and then uh, say april okay january then you press the control and select april uh, then select uh, say july then select say november okay and we want to see how this varies so if we if you select the data then this plot uh, app, app will start showing you what kind of uh, plots you can generate with this data so let's see what kind of plots we can make so we, you can make this plot as multiple data this this is uh, quite an uh, we have already seen these things so you if you just keep uh, the cursor there for a, a few seconds then it will show what this plot looks like this is for plot y y means graphs with y tick levels on the left and right so it will be y tick levels on uh, this side and that and this side also so let's make this plot so it is plotting uh, uh, y tick levels uh, on the uh, right as well as on the left and this is messy because it has plotted all the data uh, like it is plotting x versus y it's the first uh, data which we have selected january is taken as x and all, all the other data is uh, plotted uh, with uh, uh, against that january data so it looks like this but uh, th this kind of plot is also useful which we will see later uh, we can plot the error bar plot also. So if we see the error bar plot, 
then it looks like this but we don't have the error uh, error uh, var data with standard deviation data so it's uh, not the right plot okay we go for the quiver plot and many more okay so let's just plot the multi uh, multiple data series like this it looks like this one and let's see this one if there is difference or not okay mm -hmm. this one is okay let's close it this is plot as multiple series versus the first uh, series on the plot means the x-axis is taken to be january and uh, the rest as a y-axis and in this one all is taken as y and uh, the data number is taken as x axis so let's plot this one so the data looks like this so we can see that uh, even uh, we plot all the data the fluctuations is not that much means the standard deviation is not uh, too much for any data so even if you take the average so for the global average also we can see that the global temperature is increasing means there is global warming okay so we can visualize the data like this and let's go back to the editor tab okay see we uh, while we were using the uh, icons and the tabs for uh, making the plots the matlab keeps running this these scripts like uh, when we uh, plot uh, when we went to just plot january it plots like plot jan when we plot january versus means uh, july means on the x-axis january and the y-axis july then it plots like this when we plot uh, different plots on the same uh, figure then it plots like this means first it plot the january and then it uh, hold on the data uh, i will tell you what hold on means and then it makes a uh, uh, july plot and then hold off the figure so uh, let's do it uh, let's write a few scripts to get a feeling okay so let's first clear the screen and uh, uh, plot uh, for january only so let's write plot jam and uh, then click it so we can see that we got the this plot right which we were using interactively okay so uh, if you uh, keep uh, doing uh, keep doing everything interactively this is uh, this is good for one or two plots or one or two miss not very uh, big uh, miss if you don't have many many variables then it's fine but if you have many many variables and if you need to keep running uh, keep doing the same task again and again then it's a very troublesome job so it's better to write some script which we, uh, which we will do all these things for you uh, automatically we you don't need to uh, do it uh, uh, same task again and again so that's why writing the script is uh, so important so uh, in MATLAB uh, uh, whatever you do the MATLAB uh, if you demand anything like if you click on the plot uh, the icon then MATLAB generate the script for that uh, command uh, and run that script so it run that script and then gives the output so it's uh, whatever you do uh, graphically whatever you do interactively the matlab is uh, running some programs inside uh, so that you can get uh, the same output okay so uh, if, even if you don't know what uh, program is for uh, plotting so you can do it interactively and just uh, ask MATLAB uh, what does that mean like uh, if I plot uh, say uh, let's plot for uh, all this uh, like January July April and November together so you go to the plot tab and uh, plot tab and plot as multiple series so it and the plot looks like this uh, this one okay uh, say this one this is not the plot uh, we desire but uh, okay let's do this one this is the plot we want and uh, 
if we don't want to keep doing it again and again so let's uh, so you can ask matlab to give some code for this thing so uh, you just go to the file uh, menu and uh, scroll down to get the generate script and you got this script so using this script you can all uh, always generate uh, this kind of plot okay so it's quite easy uh, okay don't save this i don't want and uh, i've already saved this uh, here so i don't need this one also okay so if even if we run this uh, program uh, this program has little modifications i will show you what this modification is so, and you can get the uh, if you run this program you can import the data yeah uh, in just one second you don't need to just go uh, to the home folder then import the data and then select the data and uh, do everything again and again so you just do it once and you generate the script and you have the script so if you want to gen uh, import the same data again so you just uh, run this script uh, go to the editor menu and go to this run tab and just click it so you can get this data at once okay so what i uh, what modifications i did miss these are the same which you will uh, get uh, in uh, by generating the script uh, i will uh, go one by one what does this command mean in the coming lectures uh, but right now uh, since we are just uh, going it interactively so just need not to go for the commands in that detail but let's see what modifications i did miss for uh, uh, year data uh, I uh, for the data one I put it as year and uh, year two I I, repl uh, I deleted that variable I don't want year two because year one is same as year two so we don't want that and then from data value 2 to 13 I am saving it in different months and uh, then I am taking the average of uh, uh, each data it's like for uh, data two for the january i am taking the average means for all the year uh, for the january it will take uh, the average and save it in this variable miss new mon one uh, will uh, contain the average of the january and new mon two will contain the average of uh, the february and similarly uh, and so on and we we all uh, we can take the average of uh, the uh, year also that's mu year means mean of year and then we cl uh, clear the data which is uh, the variables which are not we don't want to save that okay so this is the data so let's uh, plot uh, this mu mon means the average of the months and let's see what this looks like so let's double click it here and it's a 12 by 1 vari uh, variable miss uh, it's uh, each month you you get one average right for January it's 5.37 for February it's 4.32 and similarly for all so uh, let's plot it for, uh, for uh, let's plot this variable so let's go to the plots tab and plot it like this so it, it seems like this one for the e for each month miss uh, um, month one is equal to uh, January and in January the uh, global average uh, anomaly is uh, this and similarly it's varying like this so you can see that in uh, uh, february the uh, in, in near july uh, june july the temperature goes down and then it uh, increases in, in it's uh, high in uh, the anomaly is high uh, during the end of the year and the beginning of the year okay that's great uh, let's see this year fluctuation okay okay uh, so we can generate uh, uh, we can import this data and uh, just uh, save it uh, in the way we want so it's uh, and visualize the data using any plot uh, you desire you can make the histogram like for january if i want to make histogram uh, 
uh, yeah. then we just go and click here and it can generate the histogram plot for January so uh, it's very easy to do it interactively but it's even uh, if you need to do it again and again then it's very troublesome so uh, in the next uh, video we will see how we can do it uh, we can write a script for doing this uh, this import and other things so mm, that's all for uh, this lecture uh, this video uh, thanks for watching